GIS News for Thursday, 14th November. I am Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall. In the headlines, China assisting Grenada in its energy conservation efforts. WRB advises government that bid price per share in Grenlec is too low. And two bills down for first reading when Parliament meets on Friday. Details are next. Canadians are resilient, tough, especially when the going gets rough. Bouncing back from Ivan and Emily is just part of that rich tradition of fortitude. Now we're here again, riding the turbulent waves of an economic downturn until we rise again. Everyone's called to play a part in the recovery process. The IMF and the World Bank have agreed to help and friendly countries will provide grants and soft loan. Therefore, let's show them that we're also prepared to help ourselves. As a proud nation, let's all play our part from paying our taxes to other forms of sacrifice we can influence nation building and hasten the economic recovery as patriotic Grenadians we're all aboard for Operation Recovery government looking into a number of ways to reduce the cost of electricity to citizens, the People's Republic of China has made a donation to Grenada that will expedite the process. This, as Grenada observes this week as CARICOM Energy Week. Abigail McIntyre reports. By way of background, during a CARICOM Energy and Trade Minister's meeting in 2001, approval was granted for member territories to host an Energy Awareness Week. That week will be used to build awareness of energy issues with focus on sustainable energy development and adherence to energy conservation principles. This year, CARICOM Member States is celebrating November 11-15 to 15 as Energy Week and is being held under the theme, A Secure and Sustainable Energy Future Begins Now. Reflect, Reset, React. As part of the week of activities, on Thursday, the government of Grenada signed an agreement with the People's Republic of China to receive a number of energy-saving equipment under the China-Grenada Climate Change Adaptation Project. Grenada received 9,000 energy-saving lighting devices, 50 highly efficient air-conditioned units, including spare parts, and photovoltaic panels. Son Yongel is representing Higher Electrical Appliances, one of the companies sponsoring the equipment. Higher is number one house appliance manufacturer in China and became the biggest white goods manufacturer all over the world for almost uh, five years. We, we contribute in developing energy saving technology for more than 10 years and I'm very happy to see that finally the people here have the chance to enjoy a higher Energy saving, uh, energy saving air conditioners from now on. With the trust and the support of both governments, HIRE was selected to undertake this project in the year 2012. After that, we redesigned the specification of the products according to the climate here. Permanent Secretary responsible for energy, Mike Sylvester, says the China Grenada Climate Change Adaptation Project has been bearing much fruit in the country. I am pleased to announce that we have successfully retrofitted the financial complex with these energy efficient lights. It is our hope to complete the installation in other major government buildings before the end of this year. We have also installed the AC units in district revenue offices and health centers across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to indicate that the objectives of the project that I've mentioned are consistent with our national objectives. The government has committed to reducing non-personal expenditure by 20% since coming into office. And of course, this project will go a long way 
in helping us achieve this goal, and in particular in reducing our high annual electricity bill of approximately $20 million. Minister for Social Development and Housing, the Honorable Delma Thomas, says Thursday's donation is just the start of many more programs to be rolled out targeting the poor and vulnerable. The assistance with the solar panels puts into proper context this government's policy towards addressing alternative paths to power generation. Not only will it, direct, will it help directly scores of our people, but we believe that it will serve as a clear, practical example to the rest of the population about what is possible in terms of using cheaper alternative sources of energy. China's ambassador to Grenada, U Bushien, says her country will continue to assist the people of Grenada. We've been conducting a lot of a friendship cooperation between our two countries. And this cricket stadium, of course, is one of the demonstrations. And you are going to see another one next to it. It's the National Athletic Stadium. It's going to, uh, the official opening ceremony will come soon. And also we, call, we can see a lot of a low house, low income housings in this country. But energy, renewable energy is another new area that we are going to cooperate in the future. And I believe it is a new demonstration of our strong friendship between our two countries. Abigail McIntyre, GIS News. Energy Minister Gregory Bowen says WRB has advised government that its bid price per share in Grenlec was too low and so it will open up the process to all interested parties. During an address in observance of Energy Awareness Week, which is observed in all CARICOM countries, Minister Bowen told the nation that WRB has also advised that the closing date for the transaction has been extended from December 20, 2013 to March 14, 2014. Notwithstanding the outcome, government will move to amend the regulatory framework for the electricity sector, to remove the monopoly and encourage self-generation and investment in renewable energy generation, so as to substantially reduce the price of electricity to businesses and residents. The Public Utilities Commission Act will be amended to give the commission regulatory control and to set the rules of operation for players within the industry by the first quarter of 2014 as a precursor to the regional regulatory body, Exera. In the meantime, the Energy Minister says other national efforts towards energy sustainability are in train. Government intends to roll out the second phase of the Energy Poverty Relief Program, EPRP to fundamentally provide modern lighting devices to qualified families. We will do this in collaboration with the Ministry of Social Development with great transparency. It is our view that we also need to innovatively create and effectively implement a dynamic public education and awareness program to allow the power of the consumers to be realized thus enabling them to drive much of the change process. I want to also reassure you that Grenada continues our exploration program to ascertain whether or not we have potential oil and gas reserves. Energy Awareness Week is being held under the theme A Secure and Sustainable Future Begins Now, Reflect, Reset, React. The Child Protection Agency has made a fervent appeal to the government of Grenada and other policymakers for the enactment of regulations for a child abuse register. It was made by Chairman Ms. Shireen Wilkinson during the national launch for breaking the silence to end child sexual abuse. The launch took place at the Queen Elizabeth Home. Details in this report. The launch of the campaign to end child sexual abuse comes just two weeks after the October 31st launch in St. Patrick of the National Child Abuse Protocol for reporting, investigating and managing child abuse in Grenada. Thursday's launch is being seen by advocates as another major step by the country to fight child abuse, one of the major evils in society. We need to understand that children are the innocents here. They're not, they're not the perpetrators, they're the victims. 
too often, and I, I'm noticing it more and more recently, our judges, our judiciary is burdened with matters of incest and unlawful carnal knowledge. That's just a big word for men, on, men having sex with children, basically. And there are too many newspaper articles reporting on the issue of sexual abuse of both boys and girls. And the deviant behavior of child abusers needs to be, or in fact must be, brought to an end. And that requires every one of us to engage in reporting. So to this end, the Child Protection Act, under which the authority operates, makes provision for the minister to make regulations for the establishment of a child abuse register. So Madam PS, I hope you take this back to our minister, Madam Honorable Delma Thomas. I'm sorry that she couldn't be with us today. But I make this heartfelt and this urgent plea to our government and other policymakers for the enactment of a regulation for a child abuse register. Because it's important not only to track numbers and statistics, but we have to be able to identify the abusers and label them as such. That's Chairman of the Child Protection Authority, Ms. Shireen Wilkinson. Thursday's activity was the third major event for the CPA, the first being the launch of its office in Karakou on October 10, followed by the National Child Abuse Protocol in St. Patrick. With this now done, the CPA will partner with the Grenada National Coalition on the Rights of the Child to host a workshop at the National Stadium next week, Wednesday. CPA Director Anderson Callan Simon says the intention is to work collectively on child protection issues. Out of that workshop, we are hoping to develop some terms of reference as it relates to the individual organizations. The protocol is a big document in itself. Small it might be in, 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 in material, but in the contents it's huge. And every agency has its own medium of operation. So we have to find a level playing field from the respective avenues of how things, because the police have the way they work, and there are certain things that they can do or they cannot do. Education, health, social work. But then let us come together and find within the document how we interact with the individual agency to ensure that child protection is done. And that is also part of breaking the silence, because professionals no longer can hide behind bureaucracy and can hide behind certain documents and policies, because the protocol nor supersedes all other aspects because it's part of the Act, Section 27, which talks about mandatory reporting. Grenada signed the Bridgetown Accord last year, an agreement signed by Ministers of Government in Barbados, and the launch of Breaking the Silence is a key point of the Accord. Mr. Simon says they must tackle the problem head-on since it is an issue in the public domain. We are going to go to the grassroots and be proactive as it relates to child abuse in this country. We have been reactive and reactive and reacting and reacting. Now is the time that we go into the villages, go into the homes, go into the schools, go into the churches, go into the community centers, go into the sports club, and start speaking about child abuse and sexual offenses against our men, our boys, and our girls. To start that initiative, one of the, 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 the first things we, we will be looking at in terms of tangible things We'll be looking at a motorcade, or various numbers of motorcade, where we would go into the places that people don't go. You see, we have motorcades that just go around, end up in Guelph, end up in Sutter's, where everybody is. But we don't go into places like Loreto. We don't go into places like Munich, where things are happening in the community and the villages that don't come out. That is what we call a homegrown break the silence and sexual abuse against young people. That is what we are intending to do. A cadre of small business owners was given some useful tools to enable them to start exporting internationally. Caribbean Export, in collaboration with the German company GIZ, designed what is called the ProNet Training for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises for Caribbean Islands. The ProNet strategy was originally designed for South African businesses, but in 2010 it was tailored to suit the region. Trade officer in the Ministry of Finance, Trade and Cooperatives, Aaron Moses, says the workshop is designed to take these businesses to another level. Now we're, encourage, we're encouraging businesses to consider exporting into the region as well as outside of the region, not only to expand your business and increase your profitability, but by exporting or getting into the export industry, you're forced to improve your productivity level.